Sometimes there are periods when the prices consolidate in the horizontal range. And, uh, well, pretty often that happens in any kind of financial markets. The ranges are natural because they represent the moments when uh, the uh, neither buyers nor sellers are dominating at the market. The price is kind of indecisive. It uh, remains within uh, some limited area. And uh, the market is trying to choose some direction before it breaks either to the upside or to the downside of the range. But until it does so, uh, it can spend considerable time within that horizontal area. And uh, well, of course, um, they say that a trend is your friend and uh, many traders always aim to find a trend and uh, go uh, upwards or downwards with the trend. Um, that is, however, not always possible when the market stands uh, between some horizontal ranges. Well, uh, we can decide not to wait for a breakout, but to trade in a range as well in order to exploit these opportunities. So, uh, range trading has its pros and its contrasts. Uh, so, Um, you cannot hear me. Let's see if the audio should be here. Okay, uh, if you don't hear it, might be some something at your computer. So we continue. So range trading has pros, has cons. And well, uh, the main advantages here is that we can easily define uh, the upper border of a range and a lower border of a range um, because, well, uh, that can be done with visual analysis, with uh, indicators as well. And uh, that is only natural because um, the range, if we see that this is a range and we'll see that on the charts, well, uh, it's rather clear that the strategy of range trading is buying in the lower part of the range and selling in the upper part of the range. Um, we, well, don't need to wait for a trend to start if we choose ranges. And um, sometimes it can happen that if uh, we uh, bought in the lower part of a range and then didn't close the trade when the market made a breakthrough to the upside, that we managed to join an uptrend at the earliest time. However, that is, of course, um, not what we aim for when we trade in a range uh, because uh, the main idea here is to close the trade once the price gets to the opposite a border of a range. We'll talk about different things like this more than we see the charts. Um, in the meantime, the disadvantages, well, uh, when the market consolidates, volumes are usually lower, you know, we are less liquid, volatility can be lower as well, so um, the price is very slow and that can be in many cases rather annoying. Uh, we don't see big trend movements, so uh, the profit in terms of pips or points uh, can be limited here. And um, in terms of some fundamental analysis, uh, well, um, range re reflects the uncertainty of the market, the indecisive conditions, so um, we in many cases can't uh, realize um, fundamental ideas when we have this kind of range trading. So we have to rely on technical analysis primarily. What um, is uh, the logic of actions in a range? I hope that um, you can see the letters here. So uh, the general logic is that firstly, we define the range we are talking about and uh, for that, we need to see the price 
trading between some support and resistance levels, which are horizontal. Next, uh, we check for uh, overbought and oversold conditions of the market. And then we check what is happening with price action. And um, on the basis of all of this, we apply risk management and we open a trade. Let's uh, get through this uh, logic of range trading with greater details, having a look at uh, the ranges like they are represented on the charts. So uh, as I have said, we define the range naturally um, when the price is between um, two horizontal levels. Of course, we know that um, it never happens in the market that the price gets right to the level like um, like here. So it can um, get not directly at the line, but there may be several points left here. Uh, it can be, at, on the other hand, it can get beyond the range as well. So um, when we are dealing with uh, support and resistance levels in all kinds of cases, and that doesn't limit itself to ranges only, we need to understand that um, here we are talking about not just levels, but some areas of support and resistance. So um, usually we will be able to identify a range when we have a couple of highs which are about at the same height, at least a couple of highs, at least a couple of lows in um, the same area. So sometimes it is possible even to draw this uh, support and resistance levels through um, every kind of uh, top we have and every kind of bottom so that we have this uh, resistance area and support area on the chart. Um, I hope that I will be, be able to erase my drawings here. Kind of <laughs> process a bit strange because I don't see here the button to just get it done with automatically. So not the best kind of software. Okay. Where's the chart? Um, yeah, so uh, we identify the range with the visual analysis first the most natural thing we can do, previous highs and lows, it's clear. What else can we use? We can use um, some indicators like Bollinger Bands at this stage. Why not? Bollinger Bands, as you can see, um, are different from the horizontal levels by the fact that uh, Bollinger Bands represent dynamic support and resistance. So, uh, the uh, width of bands depends on volatility of the market and um, we see that the lines follow the movement of the prices more closely. So uh, the price, of course, fluctuates between the upper and the lower Bollinger Bands um, and we see the same uh, rebounds and turns from the areas of uh, the outer bands, but um, they, of course, these lines are different from the horizontal lines and, uh, well, uh, it may help to combine these two techniques together to use um, the horizontal levels and Bollinger Bands as well, because uh, the this way the picture will be complete. You can see that Bollinger Bands um, can follow the price rather closely if the range is rather wide so that uh, we will just um, not perceive in many cases this dynamics of the market as the uh, horizontal range. We will focus more on uh, the uh, smaller movements and regard them 
probably as some smaller trends. So I like to combine this two kind of things together. And um, don't underestimate this uh, visual step, this analysis when we do the borders of the range, because, uh, well, if you do not uh, mark this levels on the chart, it becomes um, harder and um, it would be hard to talk about the precision of trading when we don't make these um, levels marked. So um, let's see that we have done this initial step. We defined the range. Next, we need to check for overbought or sold conditions of the market. So uh, you probably know that this overbought or sold conditions are showed by technical indicators, by the so-called oscillators. And um, the purpose for us is to filter the signals we have in a range. So uh, then the price approaches the upper border of the range. Uh, we need to have some confirmation that indeed the range is going to continue so that the price is not going to get to the upside and make a breakthrough. And indeed, the market is so-called tired of uh, going to the upside and will be uh, dragged to the middle of the range and to its opposite lower border. The best uh, sign, the most natural sign of that is oscillators. Oscillators are technical indicators which tend to fluctuate around a central level. So that the idea is that um, the market tends to return to the mean level and after a big movement in one direction, the movement of the price just um, gets uh, fades away so that we return to the central level of the range. And uh, it is said that oscillators um, in this function uh, of finding overbought and oversold areas are more efficient uh, when we talk about ranges than uh, when we try to use these indicators in a trending market, because when there is a strong uptrend, the market can stay overbought for a very long time. When there is a strong downtrend, the market may uh, stay uh, oversold for a long time. In ranges, um, that kind of situation um, doesn't usually happen, so that we can uh, rely on uh, the readings of this kind of indicators. And um, here, if when you decide which oscillator, which technical indicator to use at this stage, um, I would um, advise you to um, experiment because that may depend on the trading instruments you use. But for from what I have noticed, uh, from my experience, um, I tried to uh, range trade with RSI indicator, and I uh, personally mm, don't like it much on uh, a lot of instruments I tried it, and it uh, tends to mm, stay within the, inside the critical levels. Uh, I think that for RSI, I don't know what we are, some kind of... Um, 70 and 30, if I'm not mistaken, or 80 and 20, um, doesn't really matter. It means that uh, here RSI is um, not very distinctive, in my opinion, in terms of um, points where it gets beyond uh, its main area. So we do not uh, see these extreme points uh, very clearly. Whereas uh, the stochastic indicator, I like it. It has two lines, uh, the signal line, and um, it is uh, more volatile. It tends to visit the, uh, the extreme levels more often. You can see that here we have the same charts, same uh, 
price action and um, how RSI looks um, in comparison to stochastic oscillator um, where settings are standard for these indicators, but just a stochastic uh, looks visually more clear here. So um, I decide to um, choose the stochastic oscillator. So uh, what, what, what next? So we have applied an indicator and we see that there is a range here. So it is assumed that uh, when the price gets to the upper part of the range, and if we see that the oscillator gets to the overboard area above the extreme level here, and uh, turns to the downside exiting this area of highs, it confirms the fact that uh, the price won't get uh, further, won't continue the break to the upside. So uh, in this situation, uh, we have a range uh, which is uh, bordered by Bollinger Bands. And uh, here we have tried to pick out the situations when uh, the price went to the upper border of the range and a well stochastic indicator gave us some kind of uh, signal here. If we look, for example, um, at this point, uh, we would see that at this moment, the price wasn't, was in the middle, at the middle Bollinger Band, so not here. That's why well, um, we do not uh, regard this uh, signal for range trading because in ranges, uh, the idea is to trade from the outer borders of the range, uh, not the middle line as such. So uh, that's why we just have a look at the price first and make sure it is either at the upper band or the resistance line or near the lower band uh, here or the support level. Um, so using this um, helps us to uh, just throw some of the signals we have out. Uh, of course, uh, never when we trade in the range, we'll be 100% sure that this is indeed the uh, best time and the best exact levels to enter the market. Uh, that kind of uncertainty is always present in some way, but at least we can um, have an idea where we are at this point in time in the market and uh, if we see that uh, stochastics is at higher levels and the prices are high that surely tells us something that the momentum of the market its ability to overcome the resistance provided by the bollinger band or the previous highs uh, is limited the same is with support to strengthen uh, this kind of analysis, it is uh, recommended to have a look at price action as well. By price action, in this case, I uh, mean mainly uh, Japanese candlesticks. And as uh, in ranges, we trade uh, on the reversal from resistance area or reversal from support area, then uh, we are looking for reversal candlesticks. Uh, in the uh, vicinity of these levels. Sometimes we can um, pick out the candlesticks with uh, big upper weeks, uh, which are going higher beyond the uh, Bollinger Band on the upside, like here, here, uh, here. Uh, sometimes that may be some engulfing patterns inside bars. Uh, harami patterns. Uh, the patterns are really, really numerous here. Just 
uh, the standard things. Of course, the pin bars, uh, the candlesticks with a long upper or lower wicks or shadows, as they also are called, uh, are the things which are the easiest to spot. And um, it's not really a problem to identify these things on the chart. It doesn't take time. And uh, well, candlesticks do reflect the market psychology uh, when we have this kind of candlesticks with uh, long upper weeks, for example. It is a rather clear sign that the price failed to close at the high of the period and compared with overbought oscillator, compared with a Bollinger Band, which is going here. That uh, is pretty reliable um, signal, and I think that it is as good a signal as we can get when we do trade in uh, ranges. So um, that is how technical indicators work um, and how they provide us with some signals. So. Um, that can actually be a foundation of a rather good trading system. And I know people who even prefer to focus their efforts on uh, range trading. They even uh, do not consider breakouts. They uh, tend to find the markets where uh, the fundamentals um, are in a way that they favor range trading. So there is a kind of uncertainty or the powers of buyers and sellers are more or less equal due to the fundamental reasons. And they are um, happy to um, do uh, trading according to this uh, logic um, in a range. So we go, I think, went here to the third part. Yes, uh, we checked price action, we checked for Japanese candlesticks. And um, how about uh, risk management in range trading? Was, what does that mean? Um, well, the first uh, thing to do, and uh, when we speak about risk management, and we understand that in a broad sense, it's worth checking economic calendar because we know that the price tends to consolidate in a range in many cases ahead of some important event. And if you are unaware of that and if you plan to trade in a range due to only uh, technical signals, um, you may be really, really surprised by a sudden breakthrough uh, at the time of the release. So it is necessary to be careful here. As for uh, their recommendations about stop losses, take profits, I, um, I get here. Well, uh, this is just something for you to consider. I'm not saying that it's um, the only possible way. But uh, this way it does have um, some logic about it. So. Uh, we know that um, the borders of the range, as we have already spoken about, are not absolute and uh, there may be false breakouts uh, of resistance or support of a range. As a result, uh, then we choose a place for a stop loss order. Well, uh, in many cases, it is recommended to be about a half of the range's size in case we are afraid of volatility and um, of having too tight a stop loss that may be hit by the market. But then again, that uh, size may be lower if you see that earlier the price tended to be uh, rather respectful of the range borders and if you don't want to um, have uh, that kind of uh, risk exposure if you are not comfortable with that well smaller is possible but uh, to adjust uh, for volatility and unpredictable behavior of the markets and false breakouts 
here is what you can do. Um, traders uh, sometimes uh, like to move stop loss order to break even point um, in order to make sure that the trade is um, well, not a losing trade at least. And uh, in case of range trading, um, it is not recommended to move a stop loss order to the break even point fast because um, that kind of strategy is more apt for breakout trading. In breakout trading, if there is a breakout, the price will likely uh, have high speed of movement and uh, it will choose direction and go in the direction of a breakout, making a strong move. As a result, uh, it will go farther away from the entry point so that it would be able to, would be sensible to move stop loss to break even point because, well, um, if the price uh, goes in the opposite direction, uh, there will be no point in trying to pursue that breakout. In range trading, uh, the prices can be a bit more undecisive. They can uh, lack direction for some period of time. So uh, going in one direction, in the direction of your trade, then turning um, in the opposite direction and then uh, just getting in the right direction. So there is more that tiptoeing of the price. And as a result, if you move your stop loss to break even too fast, it um, increases the risk that it will be hit prematurely. And well, that, that would lead to killing of that trade too early and not allowing it to get to take profit. Take profit is logical, natural, uh, the opposite side of a range. We just can't uh, invent here a wheel and to do anything else. But, uh, well, in most cases, it is recommended to go on the conservative side of things and um, to place a take, take profit not uh, right at the opposite border, but a bit closer to the entry point, having that um, kind of uh, spare distance there, so that uh, to be more sure that the price does get to the level you have identified as your take profit. And um, the techniques like scaling in or scaling out that imply that you uh, either add to your position or partially close your position. Well, they are kind of uh, pointless in range trading. Um, they are more suitable for trading breakouts or trading trends because um, in range we have um, a clear situation more or less. Uh, we have one border of a range, we have another border of the range, um, and we know where we will target the price's movement. But on the other hand, we have this um, unsure and unstable nature of the price, which probably won't get st straight to the opposite part of the range. Uh, it may make some moves on the way. So, um, and the size of range is limited, so no point in trying to um, just manipulate position size on that limited scale. So uh, you can see that risk management has its specific features here, but um, nothing really complicated. It is just uh, natural and uh, logical. And uh, well, having a look at the chart, kind of uh, example uh, related to everything we summarized. So you can see that here we have the range identified by horizontal levels uh, going through the previous highs and previous lows. Um, here the fact that um, this kind of range formed after the previous decline is just um, the fact that may 
be an argument in favor of uh, favoring selling at the higher part of the range to buying at the lower part of the range. But that kind of thing which, uh, uh, which trades buy or sell trades we prefer in a range, that uh, may be um, determined on the basis of some higher time frames. Uh, if we just uh, want to add another filter to our trading. But in general, uh, if we even if we uh, pay attention only to the fact that the price reached resistance and that the oscillator made a bearish signal in and exited the overbought uh, area, that can be a, an argument for us to open a sell trade. Um, the risk management here is applied, so the stop loss is put about um, a half of the size of the range. And you can see that indeed uh, there was then after that a false um, breakout attempt that uh, would have led to a stop loss being hit if that stop loss was closer to the entry level. But uh, then the price indeed went to the lower border, the opposite border of the range, and somewhere um, close to that range, but a bit above it, it would be sensible to put a take profit level. So um, sometimes uh, traders put take profit um, by having a look at some indicators or oscillators, but in my opinion, the best uh, way to find a place for a take profit uh, is uh, price action. So previous highs and lows of the price and some reasonable area uh, to make sure that your take profit is a bit more conservative and uh, not so aggressive. Well, if you like aggressive, of course, you can do uh, aggressive as well. So, uh, returning to the uh, logic of range trading and summarizing, um, we can't say that there are a lot of some special features of range trading. The key idea here is to go with a logic and on the, basi on the basis of this logic, we may have different uh, trade system with uh, different instruments. So firstly, we define the range, then the logical thing is to check whether the market is overbought or oversold and check for reversal price patterns and then set up the trade, take profit, stop loss um, and um, well, position size um, according to your um, level, the level of risk you can allow yourself. So this was uh, the information about range trading. If you have any questions, please um, don't hesitate to ask them. And in the meantime, I'd like to point out that um, Tradimo offers the best of learning support, which is provided at the premium version of this service, where you will be able to get uh, a lot of different courses, personalized support, and add free learning experience. So uh, if you are interested, check uh, the website learn.tradimo.com slash premium and uh, find out all the information about that. So um, guys, I hope that you liked the webinar we had today and uh, you managed to uh, get some useful information and in the future we will have uh, more webinars like this which are um, related to technical analysis of the market. I hope that this is something interesting for you. So uh, thank you for your attention and I will be very happy to see you at the next webinars with Tradimo.